So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the pre-release of Laravel 8. So not much thing that we are going to talk on this, but except for the installation, we are going to see how we can install Laravel 8 on our local machine. So Laravel 8 will soon be released, but something is synonymous with Laravel 8 and Laravel 7 that is always installation. So by the time you're watching this video, you're going to see this warning that say when you're browsing this documentation for an upcoming version of Laravel, the documentation and features of this release are subject to change. So, but for the installation, I don't think anything is changing except for the things that are the features that are going to be added to Laravel, which are great, but I don't think they are going to affect the installation because installation still remains the same. So let's go ahead and install Laravel 8 on our machine. Before you begin, there are some things you have to keep in mind that we need to be using PHP 7.3 and above. So how do we get that? You can download PHP if you know how to use PHP with uh, the local settings on your PC or on your machine. But we are going to be using XAMPP. So XAMPP is a great tool to power PHP on your uh, sorry on your Windows or even on your Mac or on your operating system that you're actually using. So if you can observe here, we have PHP 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. We are going with the ones that have PHP 7.3 and above. So I suggest you either download this or you can either download this. So I've already done that. I'm not going to download that again. So when you download that, just install it. Come over to getcomposer.org, have it installed. So I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to install it right away. Install for all users. Click on yes. Next. So whenever you reach here, it's going to ask you to add your PHP to your path, which is very simple. Just search for environmental variable on, on your machine. Click on environmental variables, a little bit down, you can see path, click on path, and when you scroll a little bit down, you can see my PHP C, X, and PHP added to my path. So I'm just going to click OK. OK, so in case something like a dialog box pops out for you to add that, it is very simple. Just go ahead and do it, and there is no issue with that. I'm just going to click on Next, and it's going to confirm whether that is done. You can see it confirmed that my path has been added, and I'm going to click on Install. So this is just going to install and it's not going to take a little bit of time and that is done. So that's how we can install Composer. So we use Composer, it's more like a dependency manager. If you're familiar with Node.js, when you're working with React.js or Vue.js, you use Node.js to install this application and interact with this application from your command line interface. So that's exactly what we just did. And over here, you can see we can use Composer to install all the PHP application globally. So we are going to be installing Laravel globally. So I'm just going to run that command. So when I'm running that command, what you can actually see here, Composer Global Require Laravel. So I already, I already did, did, uh, did run that. So when I scroll a little bit up, you can see I install Laravel globally, and it's going to grab everything that we need, not many files, of course. When you download your Node.js, it doesn't install many files, but it does many good things. So I've already done that, and uh, I'm going to close this commander and reopen it because whenever you install Composer, you have to reopen your git bash or your commander if you're using one. So I'm just going to uh, type down commander shortcut once again. And I'm going to reopen that on my machine. So you just make sure you do that on yours also. And I'm going to make this a little bit bold. And I'm going to go back to that folder. So going back to YouTube slash Ravel. So how do we get to use this Laravel? That is the most important thing of, uh, we had in mind when we are treating with this video. So there is a way you can like, okay, after installing Laravel globally, there's a way you can create a Laravel application. But if you're a new beginner totally, I would not suggest that you go this way. This way is very cool. It comes with authentication, comes with Blade, but if you're a new beginner, of course, those things are going to com confuse you. But I would suggest that you go for these simple uh, steps over here. So that's what I'm going to do right away. I'm just going to type down Composer, create project, prefer this. I'm just going to scroll a little bit down to uh, reduce the text, Laravel slash Laravel app. So this app is the app name. So I'm just going to give it an app name. So this is going to take some time because it's going to now grab everything that makes up Laravel the engine, everything, the models, the controllers, the things that makes Laravel unique and it's going to install it and put them together inside this app name folder. So let's give that a, a, a time to finish, but we're not gonna waste time. What we just have to do right away is to 
I want to show you there is something uh, called HTSS, especially when you are dealing with Laravel. So it's more like a pretty URL, something like when you see this pretty URL. But as a beginner, this is going to totally confuse you because you may not really have this idea of how to use HTSS. Of course, it's a great way, especially when you're using this app, not on your local host, but maybe you're using it on your local hosting or maybe you bought a cPanel hosting, I mean. So we are not gonna do this. So there is a way we can do this. So if you watch my previous Laravel 7 courses, you will observe that we actually came to Laravel, uh, sorry, to my XAMP folder, and we entered the Apache folder, the COM folder, and inside our COM folder, we have this, uh, I think, HTTPD conf. So I'm just, okay, sorry, not this, file actually, not this file. Inside extra, we have the vhost file. So I'm just going to look for that vhost file. So over here you can see HTTPD vhost com file. I'm just going to open that with my notepad uh, on my PC. And you can see we have, we created some virtual hosts for our application and we were able to use uh, custom domains on our local host, even though these domains don't exist online. But so far you created a virtual host and map them to a folder, maybe your Laravel app folder is going to do this for you. So I will, I'm not gonna confuse you actually, we are going to recreate the project because if you see here, we actually made use of the SAMP htdocs start, sorry, SAMP htdocs folder, and we created a, an application called start, then we map the public file to this URL using our virtual host. So that's exactly what you can see over here. You can use your HTSS. So if you scroll a little bit up, say Laravel includes a .public HTSS that is used to provide URLs without the index.php. And that's exactly what we did, but we didn't do it this way. We did it uh, using our Windows vhost file. Let's go ahead and run the same command. So I just copied that same command. I'll paste it and let's give this some couple of seconds. Then we can come back. But mind you, we are using blog this time around. So let's just give this a try. So we have uh, installed a Laravel application inside this blog folder. So over here, you can see the blog folder and you can switch over to the blog folder and use the PHP accessing command to run your Laravel application. You can even run it from your command line interface just by typing PHP server. Then you can give it a local host, like let's just say local host 5000. And when we hit enter, it's going to allow us to automatically run this on uh, local host 5000. We can go ahead to visit that URL. So coming back here, I can just run PHP, sorry, not PHP again, localhost 5000. And you can see we can run our PHP application from that, but like I said, you are going to have an error as a newbie because this is more tricky whenever you are uh, doing something like this. So that's why we prefer using the vhost file to actually do stuff like this. So let's go ahead and fix for the vhost files. Back to setting up our virtual host which we are going to do right away so over here i'm just going to grab these lines of code come a little bit down and paste it and you can see we have x c c x um, hc dogs then the name of the folder and then we map it to the public folder so i'm just going to change this to blog and i'm going to change it to lara.blog.com and for us to use that, we have to edit our vhost file using our notepad. So we are going to open this as an administrator. And we have to open, open uh, the windows. So we have to go over to localhost. I don't know what's going on. So, okay, I mistyped, I clicked something. So we have to go over to windows click on a local C drive, click on Windows, click on System32, click on Drivers, etc. And uh, we have to select all files. You can see the vhost file over here, then we can edit it. So you can see I already uh, did use some virtual host uh, configuration. So this is the one I use for our 7 crash course, but I'm just going to copy that, come down a little bit and paste it. I'm going to put down the same name, Lara blog, dot com i'm going to save that so make sure that the name that you are using over here on this uh, http uh, v host com file 
the name you are using here is same name that you add over to the other uh, vhost file so let me just close this and what we have to do is to restart restart our xamp so if you have that running already we have to restart it and let's go ahead and visit lara blog.com and it should open the laravel project for us so let's just give this some time so you can see automatically it's going to open that and that is really cool so let me just go ahead and open this folder on our visual studio code so let me just open that so that's how we can install laravel 8 on our machine and i'm going to increase this a little bit let me kind of increase the font size So let me just make this 26 and you can come over to app. You can even come over to resources, go over to views. You can see welcome blade. So that's the screen that we can see over there. So I can just clear everything here. So you just, uh, okay, let's, they not clear everything, but let's clear everything inside uh, the body and also clear the styles. So I'm just going to remove the styles, clear everything inside the body. And I can just say, Head on one, hello world. And I'm going to go back and refresh our application. And you can see we have the hello world on our screen. So thank you for watching. If you really enjoyed this course, make sure you give me a thumbs like. And also make sure you share and hit the subscribe button and also the notification button by the side. Because once Laravel 8 is uh, finally on board, we are going to go through so many things and are using Laravel 8 to build good applications, modern application and application that you're going to love. So make sure you hit the like button and see you I also have some cool stuff like React Native Animation, React Native Applications tutorials on my channel. You can go ahead and check that. So don't forget to hit the like button once more and see you on the next video. Bye bye.